there's a lot of good stuff coming out next week. This first full week of April, there's three shows that are airing that I am just stoked for. And I really thought it was just gonna be one, but after kind of like looking at some things, uh, no, there's three. And I'm not even talking about Shield Hero season two. That's happening, like Shield Hero season two. I know a lot of people are looking forward to that. That's just bonus for you, there you go. And a lot of people are excited for I always had to look up this name, hang on. Uh, Shikamori's Not Just a Cutie. I will never remember that name. But I'm actually okay without that, you know why? Because one, I don't watch a show just for a pretty girl. Dress Up Darling. Look, I did a video about that. Dress Up Darling was about more than just a cute girl. But she was probably best girl of the year. But I just got my fix of that. So no, it's not those two. Those are just bonuses. What are the other three? Well, that's what I'm gonna gush to you about today. And hello, fellow casual or hardcore otaku. It's what's out of taku here. What's up? This video was originally going to be about <laughs> But then I realized oh my god, there's actually two other shows coming out and why not? Let's just talk about all three. Please check them out if you haven't yet. They're really freaking good <laughs> Komi-san can't communicate season two we're getting a sequel so soon after the first season. But if you've never heard of the show, it's basically an anime about super beautiful girl, Komi, but she can't communicate. She, she's not, it's literally the title of the show, so that's perfect. But she has social anxiety. She really struggles to talk with anybody, like even her family, funny enough, like in her, even her home place. But she has the goal of making a hundred friends and she meets a guy named Tarano that's gonna be her first friend and to help her with that. And it's just, a show that isn't just very wholesome a lot of the times, but also just comedic gold. There's such good comedy in this show. I was really surprised by that. Specifically, Najimi, I think is their name. Person that started as a guy and now dresses as a girl in, there was a scenario that they even go, that's okay, I'm a dude. And I'm like, what? <laughs> No, Najimi is just a genuinely funny character that I have laughed so many times to. And there's other members of the cast that get me to laugh. And Komi's, her, you know, not able to communicate leads to great comedic moments. Like people don't, they, they, they like try to interpret whatever she's actually do. Dude, just trust me. I can't believe we're getting a season two so soon, right after the first. It feels like the first season just ended. But they were ready. They were ready with the second season and we're getting it and I am grateful. But the reason I'm not just talking about Komi-san is because Ka- Hold on. Kaguya Love is War Season 3. Yeah. Kaguya Love is War Season 3 is happening too. And I, I don't know how I almost forgot that. There's a review. Um, Should be in the top cards above. Please don't click away from the video yet. Save that for the end. If you want thoughts on Love is War Season 2. Or was that Season 1? I can't remember. This is- romantic comedy of the generation honestly it is just from start to finish thoroughly entertaining it's like the first romantic comedy that is getting season after season which is fantastic because we never get that it's pretty much about a guy and girl that are uh in sort of a mental warfare game to get the other to confess and they, they both think that they like each other but they don't want to be the first one to confess so they're kind of playing this mental war game to hopefully get their win for the day and it just is accompanied by hilarious narration, hilarious side characters, great animation by A1 Pictures, but the voice cast, one of the best performed voice casts I think I've ever seen of any show, like ever. There, This cast nails it so hard in every episode performing these crazy characters. <laughs> I am actually really looking forward to seeing the return of Miko. This is like the one rom-com show that I don't mind not getting development because that just keeps the crazy antics going and I really don't mind that unless there's like just more antics to have when they're in an actual relationship or something. It's like the first rom-com show that I'm just like I want them to get together but I also don't. And by the way the third show in this list it's not even a sequel season. I've never read the manga it just has me sold based off of being a collab between Cloverworks and Wit Studio with a fantastic premise, gorgeous looking characters, great. All around, the trailer has me sold. Spy X Family looks amazing. It's not just because it visually looks fantastic, which it does. It's animated by Wit Studio and Cloverworks. 
Are you kidding me? Now, when I look at the trailer, it does look a lot more like a Wit Studio production with maybe like the shine of Cloverworks, like the color palette of Cloverworks with the animation of Wit, who, man, Wit Studio is just, they have been knocking it out of the park. They adapted the first three seasons of Attack on Titan. They did The Great Pretender, fantastic anime, by the way, and uh, Vinland Saga, which I hear is also super fantastic. And then there's Cloverworks. I don't know if I could ever forgive for Promised Neverland season two. <laughs> that probably wasn't their call though, it was probably the producers, but they gave us Dress Up Darling, so it kind of balanced out. But it's not even just those two studios, it's the premise. The premise of this show is so interesting because you have, I think they're posing as a family where there's a guy that's a spy, somebody that, you know, is espionage and goes undercover and is well-trained and blah, blah, blah. Then you have a beautiful looking girl, like she's gorgeous, but she is an assassin, a killer, a hired gun, if you will. They both have to play parents to a little girl that will probably make everybody just so happy. She looks adorable in the trailers, but guess what? She's an esper. She's an esper. She can read minds. She can never be not knowing the truth of the people around her. And it just so happens that she is being in disguise with this spy and assassin as parents. And the parents might actually potentially flirt or be into each other. I don't, I don't know, but it just sounds super cool and it looks super cool. And apparently it's supposed to be like a shonen property. What? I don't think I've ever been so sold on the first season of a show without like any other things. I've had a friend or two recommend it to me, but honestly, it's just from the trailers, it's just from the premise, and it's just from the people handling it that I am like, let's go, kind of a thing. Like, like I honestly might be more excited for this than the previous, mm. and I'm happy for those that are excited for Shield Hero season two and pink haired girl is cute most of the time. So it's gonna be a good time in anime this season, but what did I miss? Let me know in the comments. And if you've heard of or watched Dress Up Darling, you should check out the video I did on that. I'm very happy it actually impacted a person or two I saw in the comments. So check out that video and don't forget, be geek, be proud, be awesome.